Hello. Hello, welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Walter, and today we're at the Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and they actually charge an admission here. This is one of the few. So if you have an annual pass or a disabled pass, uh, it will work here, otherwise there's a nominal admission. Anyway, the colorful North Dakota Badlands provide the scenic backdrop to the park, which memorializes our 26th president for his enduring contributions to the conservation of our nation's resources. The park contains 70,448 acres of badlands, open prairie, and wildlife along the Little Missouri River. Uh, we saw some of it as we were driving in and it is absolutely beautiful. So thank you and stay tuned. So there's two parts of this park, which is the south unit and the north unit. And I'd like to do both. So we're at the south unit now. We have Wanda hitched up, so we're only doing the mass uh, the stamp part today. We are here at Medora, North Dakota, and it's a lovely RV site. It was pretty level. We got 50 amps, water and sewer, and Wanda and Aries fit in this RV site. Plus there's room for another car in the back, so it's a good RV site. And we've got trees shading us. However, the site we're in, I don't recommend A-class vehicles only because these, these are low branch trees, especially this one. It's got a really low branch, but for the Airstream, it's perfect. So let me show you the setup. We had to put one block down over here. Uh, water, sewer. Water is a little bit off. It's all the way down here. We do have a fire pit. So it's a it's a fairly good setup. Again, 50 amps, water sewer, and lots of shade. So this is where we are at. And they're building new RV sites over here in front of us. Uh, they all look like they're 50 amp pull-throughs and they're leveling them now. It's a lot. They're gonna make a fortune on this. So it looks really good. Oh, there's more over there, or they're leaving that blank. So it's, it's a really, I, I like the park. <laughs> Medora RV Campground. We're one mile from Theodore Roosevelt National Park. The entrance to the south part of the park is one mile away. And that is actually Theodore Roosevelt National Park behind us, which is really nice. But here we are. So we're going for our walk around the RV park. Maybe one or two loops. Just to check it out and show you around. See, look, it's grid 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, look at that. Oh, you're right. Look, it's 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, wow. Look at my husband who counts. Yeah, are, we, are we the same over here? One, One. Well, four, five. Did I put us all in numerical order? Probably. Why not? Oh, I mean, they're all the same. Three. Three, four, five. Yeah. Oh, there's Petra over there. Oh, Mark's. Is that Mark over there? That doesn't look like they're right now. 
two. 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 Oh, well, that is. Maybe already there. Then three, four, five. And then eighteen. That's out of place. They could have had people already camped here that they couldn't move. Are they there? There's a lot of bugs flying around me. Knock on the door. 17? No, 15. 15. Maybe they're not home. What? Knock on the door. Just knock on the door. No. Yeah. They're either home or they're not home. Oh. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> we know you like chocolate, so we brought it to you. <laughs> that's that's Smitty. I think that's Smitty. They have 30 amps. See, they have one air conditioner. They're lost. Okay. <laughs> or they may be going around. Okay, that over there where the cliffs are, that's Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So we're actually looking at it. <laughs> actually it is. This is these are 30 amps over here you can tell by the size of the pedestal a little bit see look tiny 30 50 oh no this is 30 that's 30 see the width see this width and that width over there are two different widths that's how I can tell now Oh, 30. There's a 30. Or 23. It's a 23 footer. There's another one over there. Oh, wait, that's ours. Never mind. What? No comment. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's two over here. Oh, three. You see the third one? The tier, the, the base one. camp. The base camp, way over there. Oh, okay. That's an airstream also. Yes, I see it now. In between the... Yeah. The, Three, four air screens in this park right now. Oh, they're not, they don't have a number. They're not part of the cult. Well, they could put their number on when they go to cult meetings. Oh. Oh, they're part of the cult. One, nine, nine. One, nine. One, nine. We look them up. Yeah, we can look them up. homes here. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, look at all these people tent camping. Oh, tent camping. I remember that from childhood. How horrible. That's why I was 59 years old before I ever went camping again. We're not camping, we're RVing. That's camping. I have no inclination of living like a homeless person. I'm sorry, tank camping to me is homeless people. See these people? They're not camping. And they're not homeless. Oh look, there's another airstream. They're not part of the cult either. Oh, this is brand new. Look. Oh no, it's not. It's an international. They have an older hitch. And they like fresh air. According to their license plate. Fresh air. They have one. They only need 30. Where are the dogs? Why is she walking without the dogs? Dogs are taking a nap. Oh, I don't know. What's wrong? I've never seen you walking without the dogs. I know. I just took them and I told my sister. I would take a picture and show her. Welcome back. Thank you very much. When did, I mean, did I miss you? You weren't here last time. I got home at midnight last night. Oh, okay. I was going to say, wow. You just, you you did, I'm pretty unobservant. You, you didn't miss anything. Well, Ariel didn't remember you were snap on. Oh, no. Really? He, he just. Well, did, I don't have a snap on. I, 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 meant, I mentioned, you know, the couple from snap on. Who are they? What's snap on? You? It's okay. Look, it's. Snap Usually on. the shoes, oh, the socks. Idiot. He is more observant about this than I am. Well, I have no Good clue. Thank you very much. Yes, it's a beautiful place to take pictures. Yeah, it is. It really is. And right there, that cliff is Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And so I mean, you're you're that's actually what we do looking, tomorrow ourselves, you're, right? you're actually yeah. looking at it. You're no, already you're no. already there, as far as I'm concerned. You're no, you're no. looking at it. We have and, a, and, a park pass. Yes, we do. Perfect then. Yeah. Did they do charge a miss? They do charge a miss. It's hefty. It was thirty dollars a vehicle. Yeah. Twenty, really? thirty dollars a yeah, vehicle. Like wow. So it's good to have it. It's pricey. Absolutely, it's way worth it. Yeah. Spend some time here in the place where I said the romance of my life began. <laughs> yes, Billy. <laughs> where you are camped right now was the town of Little Missouri. Unless you were a resident of this area, then you called it Little Misery. <laughs> in 1883, in September, I had heard of a buffalo hunting region here in the Dakota. So I headed west from New York and took five days by rail. I arrived just past the crossing of the railroad tracks and the road out there. There was a small depot. As I stepped off the train in the middle of the night, I did not step onto a plane. I stepped onto stage. Train headed off in the dark, following the rails toward the Montana Territory. It's an actual pitchfork. That is so cool. <laughs> it's a real pitchfork. Yes, it is. And imagine coming in and not being anywhere. Uh, We're not going to start the line yet for another five minutes or so. I will call the line. Skip the dinner, let's start with the dessert. I know, dessert. I know. Always <laughs> have to make sure you have room for that. We have to start with the steak. We have to start with the brownies. They're not done start. with the steak yet. They're still oh, putting so it on the pitchfork. We're filled up. These are just going to be over here. When we got to the Fraser River Gorge coming through Canada, mm -hmm. Keith goes, I can't drive anymore. I had never pulled the RV. And the one we had then is bigger than the one we have now. Right. And it was like two and a half later, hours later, I'm going, it's all yours. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Line. Oh, they're 
ridiculous. There's Janice and Ed. Okay, here's the horseshoe they keep yelling at. <laughs> yelling at us. Go to the horseshoe, horseshoe. Here's the horseshoe. <laughs> follow the horseshoe. They keep yelling at follow the horseshoe. Follow the horseshoe. Following the horseshoe. Well, when I saw that all those people trying to get the Okay, there's the horseshoe. Yeah. Oh, is that the amphitheater? Yeah. Way down there. It's like Red Rock. Yes. Except without the rock. <laughs> yeah. Where's Red Rock? Which one? The one in um, Denver. No, no, okay. We've been to Red Rock, that's why when you said Red Rock, I wanted to show the same one. <laughs> Baked potato, fruit, broccoli, baked beans, coleslaw. It's actually a good cut of steak, however, they don't know how to cook it. It's medium well, and a good steak is rare to medium rare. Steak was not good. Again, yeah, good cut of meat, but cooked improperly. Probably if you got up there, but first in line, you might have had no, a shot again. I don't think so. Them. But I think what it is is they sat for they too sat, long. They sat, yeah. They, they left them on too long. It's a good cut of meat, but they, they just they ruined it. it. Oh, how cool. Oh, and there's horses. Look at all the wildlife. Wow. Yeah, that's part of the show. It's part of the show. At the end of the show, you reverse these escalators, right? Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, you can't walk this. Better have a medic up there. No kidding. <laughs> but they back the pods down, see? Well, then you can do judge. You see the two out there? going down backwards? Yeah. Uh. Beautiful. Phew. They put food up there every night before the show. Yeah.
up there and see.
Roosevelt's. No matter where they came from or what brought them here, they all had one thing in common. They dared greatly, and they can inspire us to do the same. For this is a land where dreamers are free to dream, and the world needs dreamers. there's breakfast here from 8 to 9 right now it's 7 I'm hungry now so we'll see if they're open if not I'll go somewhere else to get my breakfast okay silverware plates you get eggs it's delicious Let's go! 
cursing, he showed me to the upstairs gallery. There were 14 cops. 13 of them were occupied by cowboys. So I threw down my gear, and the next day I went looking for a man to take me on the buffalo. The cowboys of Little Missouri were reluctant to take an eastern dude on a buffalo hunt. Somewhat like competing against Congress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except instead of water, it would have been hot air. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Nothing's changed. Agreed. <laughs> oh, this region, none of the cowboys wanted to take an eastern dude on the buffalo. You must imagine my appearance in the Dakotas. I knew how cowboys dressed. I had a large sombrero. I had a buckskin shirt with fringe and embroidery. I had a belt custom made by Winchester with a dark piper bear head on it. I had pearl handled revolvers with my name engraved on the grip like Pope. I had a sterling silver hunting knife custom made by Tiffany. I had seal skin shacks alligator skin boots and silver spurs. But do you know the worst part of my time? My spectacles. Cowboys viewed spectacles as a sign of a moral deficiency. I eventually convinced a man named Mr. Joe Ferris that he should take me on the buffalo hunt. So we set out from his brother Sylvain's ranch about six miles south of here. It was the Maltese Cross or Chimney Butte Ranch. We headed off into the wilderness for 10 days looking for a buffalo. There was not one to be found until that 10th day. And when we shot that buffalo, I danced like a wild man and handed Mr. Ferris $100 on the spot. When we returned to the Maltese Cross Ranch, I asked the lady there what would it cost to go into the cattle industry here in the Dakotas. He said it would spoil the books of $40,000. I thought about that for a moment, and I wrote a check for fourteen thousand dollars as a down payment, and became a Dakota rancher. I headed back east, and I would make trips here at points. But in February of 1884, you may know what happened in my family. That my wife and my mother, my first wife, her name was Alice. She passed on February 14th in the morning, and then later that day, my mother passed in the same house. My wife had had Bright's disease. She had given birth to our daughter two days before, and my mo mother passed a typhoid fever. In June, I made my way west, and I told my family, black care rarely sits behind a rider whose pace is fast enough. I was determined to come back out here and outrun the cloud of gloom that had overshadowed me. So I did just that. came back here to my ranch and quickly discovered that we were on the Mata Hay Trail. The custom of the period was, if a cowboy came by, you had to offer him food and drink and conversation. We had about seven cowboys a day stopping by the ranch. That does not leave time for solitude. So I followed the Little Missouri River north about 30 miles, seeking a second ranch site. I came to a great grove of cottonwood trees. In the midst of the grove were the skeletons of two bull elk. They had battled to the death with their antlers. I called the area the Elkhorn Ranch, and I summoned two of my old friends from Maine to come and help me, Bill Sewell and his nephew, Wilmot Down. They are excellent Maine woodsmen, and I'm a fair hand with an axe as well. One day as I rode in from the range, the boys were cutting down the cottonwood trees to build our cabin. I determined I would help them. At the end of the day, one of the cowboys asked Mr. Dow how the day had been. Mr. Dow did not know I was listening. He said, well, Bill, he cut down 53 trees. I cut down 49. The boss, he beavered down 17. If <laughs> you've ever seen what a beaver does to a tree, it was not a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but we eventually had a delightful ranch house. And as a ranch owner of two ranches, I would never ask my men to do anything I was not willing to do myself. One of the most mundane tasks on a cattle ranch was at night you would release some of the horses so they could forage for their own food. In the morning, you had to follow their trail and retrieve those horses. I followed the trail one morning of a very wanderous pony. By the time I caught up with him, we were in the Montana Territory. It was now evening. 
it was cold and I needed a place to stay. The only room available was over a saloon. I asked the proprietor about the room and he said there were two beds. The one had two cowboys, the other only had one, I could rent the other half. <laughs> so I did. Threw down my gear, got into bed. Middle of the night, the door is kicked in, a lantern and a Colt revolver are thrust in my face. And I hear a voice say, he ain't the man. I was thankful. <laughs> they went to the man beside me and said, all right, Bill, come peaceably. He said, I'm coming, I'm coming, don't shoot. They left. One of the cowboys in the other bed sat up, struck a match, and lit a candle. I broke one of those unwritten rules of cowboy etiquette. I asked a question. I said, I wonder where they took Bill. There was no response. I thought the man had not heard me, so I said, I wonder why they took Bill. He said, I reckon they wanted him. And he blew up candle. <laughs> it turns out that Bill, in a fit of playfulness, had been shooting at the feet of a railway conductor to make him dance. That caused the train to be delayed. That train was hauling United States mail. It is a federal offense to interfere with the delivery of the mail. But, oh, there are many more stories I could share, but